Hi everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to make a regular sized sunburn hexagon motif. If you've been following along on Instagram, you've probably seen this yarn already. I am using Tweed Delight. Oh, get out of here, green. I'm trying to steal the spotlight. Um, I've been using Tweed Delight by Hobie Hobby. I'm not really sure how it's pronounced, but I will have all of the details um, in the description below for you guys. Um, I'm going to be using a five millimeter hook size H. Hopefully you can see that there. Um, and I'm going to assume that you know all of your basic stitches so that we can just cruise through the tutorial. So here I have one that I've already worked up. Um, isn't it glorious? <laughs> so I wanted to measure it so that you guys have an idea of how big it is. So this way it's about 4.75 inches. And from point to point, or tip to tip, yeah, just over, just over five inches. Okay, so it's a decent size. And then as I'm joining up my blanket, because these motifs will be used in a blanket, I'll be doing a continuous join, and it will add about another inch on either side. Okay, so just keep that in mind when you're planning your blankets. This, um, I'm sorry, I was going to say cotton. It's not cotton. It's a wool. Um, it's a wool blend. So it's, I think it's 80% wool and then like, I don't know, 15 or 20% um, tweed. So the little necks, the little neps in it. Um, but yeah, I'll have all of those details in the descriptions below. So just so you know, it does work up a little bit smaller than say an acrylic yarn, which usually, you know, it kind of a bit marshmallowy. They tend to be a lot bigger. So keep that in mind when you're planning your projects. Okay, so let's get started. I am going to grab my first color, which is this delightful pink. Looks like sprinkles. <laughs> get this guy out of the way. Okay, so what we're going to be doing, actually I'll grab this to show you. If you're familiar with the original sunburst granny square, then you know that your center starts with 16 stitches, okay? That works great when you have four sides on a square, obviously, but we're making a hexagon. So our beginning center has to have a number that is divisible by six. So this has to be either a 12 in the center or an 18. Now you'll see a lot of sunburst hexagons worked up with 12 stitches in the center. And then that means that your puff stitch round ends up being a little more spaced out. And so you get these like really big gaps between your puffs. There is a way to alleviate that. Most puff stitches are worked by doing three yarn overs. Um, so if you want to kind of cheat that really spaced out look that a center of 12 gives you, then you can do four yarn overs in your puff stitch. Um, I like to skip that whole process and just say, I'm gonna do 18 stitches around and then it ends up looking really nice and tight, just like the original granny square was intended to look. So let's start with 18 stitches. First, I'm going to make a slip knot. Okay, so I do mine by wrapping my yarn twice, grab that last one, pop it over your finger, wrap again, grab the last one and pop it over. You can do yours however you like. It doesn't matter as long as it gets the job done. Okay, so now I'm going to chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. And I'm going to slip stitch into the fifth chain from my hook or that very first chain that you made there, okay? To create a center ring. So here we have our center ring, and I'm going to be working all of my stitches into this center ring. But before I do that, we end up having this tail. What do we do with the tail? Well, if you don't work around it with your stitches, then you end up having to sew it in later with the needle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under and grab that tail and just wrap it around and stick it in between my fingers. And I'm gonna do that for as long as the tail is long, okay? Don't do it too tightly, just wrap until, I'm probably not gonna make it around the circle, so I'll just leave that, okay? And then I'm going to start my chaining. And I'm just gonna hold my finger in the center there. By wrapping it around a few times, it means that I don't have to sew it in later, it's done. 
Okay, so once I've worked my stitches around, then I can snip it and call it a day. So I'm going to start with a chain two. And this chain two is going to count as your first double crochet stitch. Okay, so we're going to count that as a stitch. Now I'm going to work 17 more double crochets into the center of this ring for a total of 18, because this one counts. So we're going to yarn over, insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's your first double crochet, okay? And I'm just going to do 16 more of those into the center of this ring. And if you find that you're starting to run out of room, okay, just pull back on those stitches. Don't worry, you're not gonna distort your work or ruin it or anything like that. Make space, because we gotta squeeze them in. Maybe I should count, eh? Okay. So when I'm counting, remember we're counting that first chain two as our first stitch. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I need 18, so I'm gonna do one more. And we're done. So I'm gonna grab my tail and just snug it up a bit. You don't have to do it too much, okay? Now to join our round. This is how I do mine a little bit differently, and this is what creates the nice seamless effect that you have on my... Here's another hexi. I'll show you. So in some hexes or in some granny squares, people will join into the top of the chain. I don't do that because it ends up leaving a little gap somewhere, and it ends up getting really messy in that general space where you start and end your rounds. So what I do is I like to avoid all of that mess by joining into the top of the first official double crochet stitch. Okay, so this is your one, two, chain two right here. And this is the top of the first double crochet stitch. And that's where I'm going to join my round, not into my chain. Okay, so I'm going to join here and slip stitch that. Don't need to crank it, okay? You don't need to like really tighten it up. And we're gonna finish off this color. So snip, finish off that color. Now I'm gonna show you how I deal with this end. So with the right side of the work facing me, I'm going to insert my hook into the back loop only of this next stitch. You can do it into this slip stitched one if you want, but it tends to be really tight, so don't worry about it. It's not a big deal where you start. But I'm going to insert my hook here and I'm just going to yarn over and pull that tail through. Into the next one, the back loop only, yarn over, pull that tail through. And I'm going to do that four or five times. So three, four, five. Now I'm going to flip my center over. So now we're looking at the back of our work. We can tell it's the back of the work because the stitches look funny and because we've got the tail that we originally started with. And when you look at it, we're gonna grab those back loops that we just weaved our tail into, insert our hook, and we're gonna weave it back the other way so that we're back to where we started. Just like so, okay? Now, make sure you flip it over so that the front of your circle is facing you and the front of your stitches, okay? We're never, ever going to work from the back side, okay? We're always gonna work from the front of our stitches. You can tell it's the back side because you've got your tails hanging out, okay? Now you can insert your hook into any top stitch that you'd like. I'm gonna start where I left off and then just insert my hook into the top of that stitch, not in between the stitches, into the top of the stitch, okay? So into the little Vs. And I'm going to grab my next color. What's my next color? I will do green. Shall we? Shall. All right. 
I'm going to place the yarn with a significant tail onto my hook, okay? And I'm just going to pull through. Then I'm going to yarn over both of those. You can see that I have two. Yarn over and pull through. This counts as a join and a chain one all in one. I'm going to drop the starting tail and just work with my working yarn. But I am gonna hold my tail up against my circle so that I can work around it, okay? Now, this is where we need to play around with whatever makes you comfortable. Um, I just pull up a little bit on my hook, okay, to about the height of a double crochet, and I'm gonna yarn over and start working my puff stitches. If that doesn't work for you, or if you're afraid it's gonna fall out or whatever, you can chain one, okay? And that just gives you a little bit of space to be able to work those puffs because you want your puffs to be nice and tall and loose so that you can work your hook back through it. If you make them too snug, then your hook will get snagged and it's really difficult to get back through, okay? So loosey-goosey is best. So I'm just gonna pull up a little bit on mine. I'm gonna yarn over and start my puff right into that same space that I joined my yarn. So I'm yarning over, inserting my hook, yarning over, and pulling up a loop. Remember to pull up, okay? Don't be afraid of making your stitches too tight. Loose is best with puff stitches. We're gonna yarn over again, insert our hook into that same space, yarn over and pull up another one. Again, making sure it's about the height of a double crochet. Yarn over one more time for a total of three. Yarn over, pull up a loop. You should have two, four, six, seven loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all of those loops. You have a beautiful puff. We're gonna lock it by chaining one, okay? I'm going to create more yarn here, some more working yarn. Now into the next one, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna work all the way around our circle, so we should have 18 puffs at the end. So yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, insert. Yarn over, and pull up a loop. Two, four, six, seven. Okay? And actually, on this first one, I said you'll have seven loops on your hook, and you'll actually have eight because of the starting join yarn. Okay? But throughout the rest of it, you will actually have seven. So, sorry, that was confusing. So we're gonna do that again, yarn over into the next, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all those loops on your hook, and chain one, okay? And we're just gonna work all the way around our circle here. And as I'm working around, I'm working over this tail, this starting tail, okay? And don't worry, I'm not gonna skip ahead on you guys. I'm just gonna work through it while you're working through it. If I am going too fast, you can pause the video. There's also an option to change the playback speed. So I think there's like three dots up in the corner somewhere over here and you can slow down the playback speed and that will hopefully help some folks. But pause, start, it's all good. No shame in that game. This is how we learn. Just take your time. I just love this yarn. I wasn't sure about it in the tutorial because I wasn't sure if the little flecks were going to be distracting, so I hope it isn't. It's just too good not to play with. <laughs> okay, let's talk about this tail that we're working over on the back of our work here. So I've got about this much left. 
you can just continue to work over it and then snip it at the end if you're comfortable with that or if you're using a yarn that's going to felt that tail in place. Um, if you're a little bit, you know, skeptical that your tail is going to stay put um, through washing and wearing and using of whatever it is you're making. Um, I'm making blankets and I have a three and a six year old currently and they are harsh on blankets, okay? Um, I've never had a tail come out, but sometimes if I'm using a slipperier yarn or something that's really, really soft, I'll leave about two inches and I will just sneak it back with a needle a couple times into the back and back and forth into the back of those puff stitches. So I'm going to stop working over this tail here and I'm just going to keep working into my puffs and I will sew that in so that it's a little more secure at the end. Still, still puffing away here. As you get to the end of the round, you're going to find that there are some tight stitches. So this slip stitch that we worked to close the round before, that is a stitch, okay? And a lot of people will forget that one as we come around. So this is when I remind you to count your puffs, okay? Because if you don't have enough puffs, all the remaining rounds are gonna be off and you won't be able to create a hexagon. So we're gonna go two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. I have 16 puffs. So I have to work a puff into here, okay? And a puff into there. So let's, again, it might be a little bit tough to get that hook into that slip stitch spot, but worth the effort, okay? Work it in there. And then this is a stitch, okay? Don't forget this spot here. Let me point it out here. This is a stitch. Eee, I'm a stitch. Okay, so yarn over and work your puff into there. Two, four, six, yeah. Okay, so double, triple, check. <laughs> Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 puffs, excellent. Now to join my round, instead of working my, my the end of my round into the top of that puff, I am going to push my finger in between these puffs in that chain one space that we did in between all of our puffs. I'm going to insert my hook in here, yarn over and slip stitch to close. And that just creates a really seamless, beautiful, neat and tidy finish to that round. Okay, clean up my yarn. Now, to finish this one, I do the same thing with the tail that I did to the other ones, okay? Into that back loop, we're just gonna weave that tail. I'm caught on something. There we go. A little nip. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over so the back is facing me and I'm gonna weave my tails into that back loop only, which is now your front loop, right? Because it's facing you. Just back the way we came. And I'm not gonna cut it off yet, but I can cut off my previous two tails. So this pink one, I wrapped it around my finger a bunch of times, so that's good. I don't have to deal with that. This top one here, I wove it into the back of those stitches or into the back loop of those stitches, remember? So I'm gonna chop that off. This green one, I said I was going to sew it in a couple times back and forth just to make sure it's extra super secure. So I thread my needle and I'm just going to go through the back of three puffs, okay? Once and twice. You've already worked over it, so that's three times. That should be super, super secure. You can now chop that off. Okay. Now, flip it over so you've got the beautiful front 
facing you, okay? Your tail should be right where you left off. We're not working into the backside. See how the backside kind of looks a little weird and wonky? We're working from the front side of our puffs. So we're gonna insert our hook. I usually do it right where I left off, but we're gonna go into that chain one space. So the space in between your puffs. And grab your next color. Look at that. Isn't that delightful? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna join the exact same way I did my green round. Okay, I'm gonna place that yarn over my hook and pull through. I'm gonna yarn over both of those tails, okay, and pull through. Now, we start this round with a chain two. This was my join and chain one, so I'm gonna chain another one for a total of a chain two. Okay, now we're gonna be working our cluster stitches all the way around. So this is a four double crochet cluster stitch, sometimes referred to as a bobble, sometimes referred to as a double crochet four together, depends on where you live in the world. So I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook into that same chain one space, okay, where we joined our yarn, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. You should have two loops on that hook. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, same thing, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. We're gonna do it again, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through two. We should have five loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all five and chain two. more yarn here sorry rattling in the background okay so into the next chain one space we're going to do the exact same thing now with this one I like to kind of push my pointer finger I mean for some people it might be the middle I'm not sure it depends on how you crochet but I like to separate it because on the back you can see it's quite close together, all of these stitches. So I just kind of wiggle my finger in to create that space so that your hook doesn't get caught on all of the stuff going on back there. Okay, I'm working over my pink tail. I've created a space that I can put my hook into and we're gonna work our clusters all the way around. We want a total of 18 of them, okay? So you do the yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, four times, you should end up with five loops on your hook. Okay, yarn over, pull through all five, chain two. Do it again, yarn over, create a space so you can actually work into. There you go. Easy peasy. Again, I'm just gonna work my way all the way around. So you can pause the video if you want, or you can try and keep pace. <laughs> it's a race, you're on. And the same with the previous round with the green, I worked over this tail a little bit. Now I'm just gonna leave it out, okay? And then I'll sew it in a few times. If you just wanna keep working it in all the way around, go for it. I haven't had a blanket fall apart on me yet, so.
so I'm nearing the end. For sure I'd have enough yarn that time. Nope. <laughs> I was deceived. Okay, so as we're coming away, coming away coming around to the end there's this one last space that I have to work into work my last cluster chain two now to finish my round I am going to do the same that I did in all the other ones and I'm just going to work into the space. So this chain two space over here, not into the top of my cluster, but into that chain two space between the clusters and slip stitch that round so that it's nice and tight and clean and tidy. Cut my yarn. Okay. There you have it. Round three. Complete. Now to deal with this tail, the same thing. As the other ones okay into that back loop weave it in I don't know if this way saves time or not but I just find it so much more convenient than having to like stop and pick up a needle and I don't know you still have to do a needle for these other ones but it's a few less tails do you have to sew in right So this green one I can get rid of. Oops, get back here. And this pink one, I will just weave it in. Do them as you go, folks, please, okay? Or like work on a pile that day and then before you call it a night, sew in your tails. Don't leave it till the end of your project, okay? Don't do that. That's like torture. I know some of y'all don't like weaving in tails, but just do it anyway. Okay. It will save you a headache in the end. Okay. Now, the fun part. Turning it into a hexagon. Is this going to be too dark? I don't think so. You guys are fine. Where's the end, though? Uh -huh. All right, here we are. I'm going to join or insert my hook and join exactly where I left off, but you can do it in any of the chain two spaces. Okay, so drape that yarn over your hook and pull through. Yarn over both of those tails. Okay, and we're going to chain one more for a total of chain two. Okay, that's my chain two. Remember that join counts as a join and a chain one all in one. So now I'm going to create my first corner of the hexagon. So I'm going to work two double crochets in here into this same space. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's your first double crochet. Work another one, yarn over, Insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so that's three stitches you have there. Chain one, and into the same space, you're going to work three more double crochet. So insert your hook, then work the 
three more double crochets. Right now it doesn't really look like much. You have a chain one space there for your corner. Okay. Trust me, it'll get better. <laughs> Pretty anticlimactic. I know, I know. All right, into the next chain two space, we're going to work three double crochets. So one, two, three. Into the next chain two space where my finger is wiggling here, although my finger is almost the exact same color as the yarn, isn't it? On screen anyway, not in real life. Insert, work three more double crochet. I'll just pull black so we can have a look. Okay, so that is the first side of our hexagon. Now we are going to create the second corner. Yarn over and put three double crochets into the next chain two space. Chain one for that corner, okay? And then we are going to put three more double crochets into that same space. Now you can experiment with putting a chain two in here, okay? It will certainly make it more spacious um, when you're working a continuous join, but I like that nice tight really close look. Um, if you are just going to slip stitch your squares together with some method, then I definitely recommend putting in a chain two because then it will just make, um, make it even for when you're slip stitching all your corners together, if that makes sense. Or you can just do one and instead of working into the loops, then you can just work into the space. But definitely something to play around with, personal preference. It's not going to like ruin your hexagon or anything like that, okay? So let's work our second side. Same as the first one. Three double crochets into the next chain two space. Like so. Another three into the next chain two space. Need more yarn. We are going to work our third corner. Okay, so yarn over into this next chain two space here. We're going to work three double crochet. Chain one. Three more double crochet into that same space. Okay, pull back so we can sort of see the shape of the hexagon taking place here. Okay, so we're going to work our next side with three double crochets into the chain two space. And again, okay, and then we're going to work another corner. So three double crochets. I think you get it by now, right? <laughs> I can be quiet. Chain one three more double crochets into that same space. I've already run out of yarn. It's deceiving how much yarn you actually do use when you crochet, isn't it? Okay, we're going to work another side. So we're going to put, you know, a granny shell here and a granny shell there, otherwise known as three double crochets. into both of the chain two spaces. Okay, work another corner. So three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet. Work another side, so three double crochet into the chain two space, three double crochet into the chain two space. Are we on our last corner? We are, we are on our last corner. Flatten it out so you can actually see it. Okay, see? So we're gonna work our last corner 
three double crochet. Chain one, three more double crochet into that same space. Okay, and then we're going to finish off this side with three double crochet and three double crochet. So super easy. To sum it up, easy peasy. Okay, to join our yarn, of course, I don't have quite enough. It's pulling. Okay, so let me grab my hook. So we started this with a chain two, correct? So we're going to work our join into the top of the first double crochet stitch. Can you see that? It's hard to see, isn't it? Okay, into the top. You can tell it's the top because this stitch goes with this one. So over here, it's kind of... A fat bit of yarn there. It's super poofy. So it's hard to see. Okay, join your round and just finish off. Snug it up. There you have it. There you have it. I am going to not weave. You can. If you want to weave, if you want to keep going with that, you can weave into the back loops, but I'm going to show you how I usually end on the final round of all of my motifs. So we're going to flip it over so the back is facing us. And right next, oh, this was a terrible color to choose to show you this. Okay, so right next to the square, the square, the knot, I'm going to insert my hook down the back of those stitches. Okay, and then pick up those two loops, okay, keep going down, and then I'm going to work through all of these towards the starting tail of that color. Okay, snug it up, but not too snug, you don't want to like cinch down your stitches. Then I'm going to grab that color and weave it through. Okay, so I've got two on my hook, and now I'm going to skip this first strand and weave it through the back of those stitches. Skip the next one or split the ply either way. Back again, and one more time for good measure. There we go. Snip them all off. Voila! have a nice clean beautiful hexagon all right hope it was helpful happy crocheting everyone